over here. Let me just see if she's going to let me check her reef. Oh, be a piece of spaghetti. Yeah, that's there right. you are. <laughs> ready? Uh, Let's have him tap I'm you over ready. here. Let's have, oh, piece of spaghetti here. There we go. Oh, spaghetti. There we go. Perfect. All <laughs> right. <laughs> you want your mall back? Do you want your mall back? <laughs> oh, Rady. Pediatricians, obviously, can't do a formal mental status exam on a toddler, but we pay a lot of attention to the child's interest in the environment and to her interaction with the parent and the examiner. These observations of the child's alertness, curiosity, and responsiveness figure prominently in the various toxicity scores used by pediatricians to gauge how sick a child might be. Watch Eliana's exploration of the stethoscope and her give and take with her mother and me. Let's turn to the cranial nerves. We get a good sense of the function of cranial nerves 2, 3, 4, and 6 by noting how the child tracks what's going on visually. Examination of the mouth gives us a chance to assess the motor component of cranial nerve 5 along with cranial nerves 9, 10, and 12. The child will often bite on the tongue blade, motor 5, and chase the tongue blade with her tongue. Note how Eliana licks her lips between tries at seeing her mouth. And of course, the gag reflex tells you about cranial nerves 9 and 10. During the exam, we have lots of opportunities to assess for facial symmetry and the function of the facial muscles, all innervated by cranial nerve 7. Hearing, the auditory branch of cranial nerve 8, is grossly normal if the child's speech development is progressing normally. But I make it a point to yeah. ask parents if they have any concerns yes. about their child's hearing. Note Eliana's spontaneous, expressive language, including her imitation of the word height. Hi. 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 Note her receptive language here, as she shows us that she understood my question to her. Where should I put it? Right okay. there? Okay, I'll put it right there. Watch how she shrugs her shoulder during the ear exam, a function of cranial nerve 11. We've done cranial nerves. How about general motor function? Motor skills change rapidly in the first two to three years of life, so we look at whether the child is acquiring new skills on schedule. You will also learn to pay close attention to the symmetry and the quality of the child's movements. Achieving motor milestones requires losing the primitive reflexes we demonstrated with the newborn, having normal strength, and having maturation of cerebellar function. Look at the following samples of Eliana's use of her hands. Look now at her ability to move her entire body towards a desired object. And finally, look at her ability to walk. Eliciting deep tendon reflexes is tricky in young children because they tense up. It's important for you to practice on many children so that you get the feel for normal reflexes and how to elicit them. That way, you will be prepared to evaluate the child with head trauma or motor delay. Lastly, how do you assess sensation in a young child? Well, watch how Eliana looks to the spot where I am touching her even though she did not see my hand move there. In a newborn who can't track visually or have purposeful reach, your sensory assessment needs to be a little less subtle. If you have a newborn with a possible spinal cord lesion, for instance, you need to be sure that painful sensation reaches the brain. You need to see a grimace or a cry, not just withdrawal of the limb. Withdrawal is a spinal reflex. Tell the parent what you are doing first. 
I think you can see that we have actually learned a great deal about the neurologic status of this child. It's important to take a moment at the end of your exam and consciously review in your own mind each of the elements of the neurologic exam. Is there anything else you need to re-examine?